Going places, everyone. Yeah. They're on. Yeah, yeah, please. that you will be worthy of their compliance, of their respect and honour, as you make decisions which inevitably will affect the lives of the people you represent. We pray, Father, too, that uh, 
it will be discussions where there is not unanimity among all council members. We pray that those discussions may be carried out with respectful debate and open listening, recognising that even when there is dissent, it also contributes to clarifying the issue and arriving at the best possible decision. We pray that all these councils will be truly open to your divine guidance as they exercise their ministry as representatives of the people. We pray in Jesus' name, who lives with you, Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. <coughs> and they're probably wise words for us all to leave us with today. Thank you very much. It's lovely to meet you. And I hope that your uh, stay at St. Pat's is uh, enjoyable and just get to meet as many Christians as you possibly can. Uh, and we pray for the safe return of Father Raj and Jim Gorps. Thanks, Kerry. Thank you, Father. Well, thank you, Kerry. Thank you, councillors. Have a good evening. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. All right, councillors, the, uh, the confirmation of the previous minutes of uh, the general council meeting of the 25th of July. Was someone happy to move those? Moved by Councillor Brimlecombe, seconded by Councillor McIndoe. All in favour? Against? Thank you. That's on favour. 4 to 14. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any business arising out of those moves? Probably anything we'll capture there in our outstanding meeting action. Well, obviously, we, we adopted our Works for Queensland um, 17 19 projects. Councillors, have we got it? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, review of outstanding, um, outstanding meeting actions. Refer to the number if you uh, need to. All good. All right, councillors, material, personal interests, complex of interest, personal gifts and benefits. None declared. So, thank you. Uh, Mr. C, no petition to be tabled? No, Mr. Okay. Right, well, councillors, um, before we move on to our, our committee recommendations and our reports today, um, obviously since that meeting uh, on the 25th, um, uh, Councillor David Lacey tendered his resignation, and I think it's appropriate, um, certainly before we get into what ostensibly is um, uh, back into work again, that we should take time to reflect on Councillor Lacey's time Council here. Um, this council team has always prided itself very much uh, on the fact that we work very, very well as a team and, and our community sees us as such. And uh, I suppose when that um, that team loses a member, it's um, A, time to reflect and B, uh, certainly time to be thankful for, for David's contribution. Uh, you know, David certainly, uh, in the words that he expressed when he left, um, made a very, very hard decision about leaving, certainly. Uh, not only the uh, Central Highlands Regional Council, but particularly the area that he came from, or, or I suppose was born at and loved, uh, which was the uh, Capella Peak Downs area. And uh, for those people, and like all of us that are very, very parochial about the places we were born at and represent, um, and notwithstanding the fact that our know, council is a, it's a broad, undivided area, uh, it was right that David talked about you know, his love of uh, where he came from. And uh, it was certainly part of uh, his decision making that uh, uh, it was a, a tough decision to leave, uh, certainly, uh, uh, council in, in, in that area. Uh, as you know, David uh, held uh, responsible positions on this council in the, in the short time that we've uh, certainly formed this council since uh, March or April last year. Uh, David uh, accepted uh, the responsibility as uh, chair of the leadership and governance committee. Uh, and today I chaired that uh, committee uh, after uh, his resignation, but certainly David took that responsibility. He accepted responsibility as chair of the airport advisory group. Uh, he was the director of the Central Highlands Development Corporation and the housing company. 
uh, and obviously served uh, more closely in his community in the LDMG groups and certainly in the CRD. So, um, in a very, very short period of time, as a young young man with a young family, uh, he certainly uh, sought and actively got involved in his community, uh, and it certainly was a great honour for him to be elected last year. So, uh, with all that in mind, it was certainly a tough decision for David uh, when his family situation changed to, to have to go. Uh, and move away from the area, and that's not something that's uncommon to, to lots of people in our communities that have to make decisions about those things. And uh, we certainly take this opportunity uh, of thanking David for his uh, service uh, to Capella, uh, certainly that Peak Downs area in the Central Highlands region. So, uh, councillors, uh, in respect of that, I, I would uh, like to, if someone can move, uh, a vote of thanks and, and uh, recommendation to Bob Bank and David Lacey for his uh, service to this community. So moved by Councillor Nixon. As in favour, I want to um, uh, send thanks um, for his contribution to the show over the time that he was here. So um, I just want to move that vote of thanks. Thank you, Councillor Nixon. Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Brimblecone. All in favour? Against? Thank you. Uh, and councillors, uh, if, if it is appropriate, if you'd like to say something, say it now and uh, before we move on to that. I'd probably just to reiterate the things that, that we said post um, acknowledging Councillor Lacey's resignation. I think um, you covered it nicely, Mr Mayor. Um, we have certainly enjoyed um, Councillor Lacey's input and uh, company on this council. He'll be missed and we wish him all the best uh, in his new endeavours. Thank you, Councillor Gordon and, and we have had that opportunity of thanking David and I. I think that he and Claire are looking for an opportunity at some point uh, that we might be able to get together and, uh, uh, and celebrate uh, the fact that uh, he has made a, uh, a decision for his family and certainly to, to thank him for his time here. So. All right, councillors, happy with that? We'll move on. Committee recommendations uh, infrastructure and utilities, the Yamla Theatre Roads. Um, I'll hand over to you, Gerard, to lead us through this discussion on page 15 of the agenda. Thank you, Gerard. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and Councillor. So, uh, I'm actually quite excited about this uh, uh, piece of work because it's not often that an engineer gets a chance to plan infrastructure uh, to benefit the community and, and economic growth into the future. And I believe this uh, uh, study is giving us a strong recommendation of uh, how to deliver this infrastructure to support future economic growth. Um, we've received the final reports and recommendations for the Yamada Peter Road Option Study, uh, which we commissioned a SMEC engineering consultants to undertake. On our behalf, the study involved three phases and um, Yamla option study, and there was a stakeholder consultation phase, and then uh, the final um, options development report that was uh, brought to council for uh, a, a workshop in terms of defining our recommended option. Um, the background is that uh, the area that we were targeting is the priority agricultural area uh, between Springshore. Uh, of Emerald, Springshaw, Ralston and Comet at Golden Triangle or, um, from an agricultural perspective. We had to consider also proposed and future mining activities in that area that may impact on the road network. Uh, at this stage we are familiar with Frankfurt's application to uh, relocate uh, the uh, facilities, uh, combining the facilities out of Gindi and uh, Emerald to uh, um, net result in the short term is that the main routes to access that facility would be along uh, the Capricorn Highway through Emerald or along the Gregory Highway. Um, this has distinct disadvantages in terms of the overall road network and heavy freight movements or heavy vehicle movements and um, impacts on the communities on those routes. So the study specifically was targeted at looking at how we can get a uh, link from Yamla Downs to South to um, the Acturus Orion areas. Um, I presume we don't need to see the maps. Um, the key during, um, during the engagement phase, uh, there was uh, quite a good collaboration between uh, CEHDC and Council uh, and um, the stakeholders listed in the report, which is basically Drankle, 
Department of Transport, uh, also some mining interests and uh, a significant amount of land holders in that area. And some councillors were also involved during that uh, consultation phase. So I'm going straight to uh, our recommended option. So after uh, looking at six different options, which has been set out in figure two, um, the preferred option was uh, agreed to would be option one. The benefits of this one, uh, of this option is uh, the ease of uh, implementation, the fact that we only have to create another uh, new road of roughly two kilometers between Bonnydune and Gem Road, uh, and the whole network will be enabled. Um, the other options had significant new construction, greenfields construction at a significant cost. Um, staging, it allows for staging um, to open up the network. Um, it's also a reasonably durable um, access except for a few uh, flood crossings, um, but building in uh, resilient <laughs> those crossings means that uh, we will have a network that will uh, provide the community <laughs> access during big events and during the season if there's a rainfall event it's likely to have uh, negative impacts on haulage because the grain uh, harvesting, uh, grain harvesting and uh, haulage will obviously come to a standstill during those events so flooded roads uh, is less of an issue and uh, we have to capitalize on existing uh, programs uh, for funding and obviously it's got a strong uh, community support uh, which has uh, been identified during the stakeholder engagement phase. The first <laughs> one uh, on this proposal as well is that uh, upon uh, evaluation uh, of uh, uh, benefit cost ratios, um, it returns a, a positive uh, benefit cost ratio of 1.29, um, uh, which means it, it does look very attractive from a uh, funding, grant funding perspective. So in conclusion, councillors, the recommendation. Uh, the recommendation is that uh, the, the council receive the Yamla Fever Road option study by SMEC, including the uh, three reports, phase one, the Yamla option study, uh, phase two, stakeholder consultation, and phase three, the preferred option development, all uh, data as indicated on the resolution and that council adopt um, um, option one to develop, uh, to further plan, develop and uh, prepare a business case for future planning. So council discussion is then of the option two, it's council roll. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Mayor, have I seen somewhere about the, the bridge, the Springton, the mm. yeah. um, Can you? To, to the main councillors, yes, the Springton Bridge was brought up from that workshop. Uh, we are um, looking at that bridge uh, through a separate funding program. Um, so the constraint is that any of these funding programs, you cannot have a double dip. So essentially, Springton Bridge will be dealt with through a separate, uh, and at this stage I can flag likely the bridge renewal program. And the rest of this project uh, will uh, um, essentially be around developing that road link from um, from Yamla Bonidu through to Jim, um, Glen Arena, and uh, down to Actuaris. And I know there's a property state option B, so we have to describe the road link. Yes. So, and, and just with this, and obviously, uh, in, 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 as Gerard correctly pointed out at the start of the report, uh, this is a you know, significant piece of infrastructure for council and as a strategy uh, going forward. Um, all our language, if we adopt this, and council are happy with the option, is that our language and our the hierarchy will change in terms of uh, LARS, probably calculations uh, and other funding, so that all our language must be about improving and being conscious of where we want to extend that network. So. I suppose this is a good chance to sort of discuss this thing. So, Councillor Rolfe, did you know this? So, Mayor, yeah, that just means that yeah. while we're doing this option one, I mean, 
um, the roadworks at the same time? Should we have, do we have an option for um, putting in for funding for the road, for the bridge? Because that's going to be the the link that breaks the whole road. Um, through the main councillors, uh, we did actually take a look at that bridge. Currently, that bridge is serviceable for um, heavy haulage. It's just a single lane bridge. So at this stage, um, it wasn't part of the study. And from a road network investment, we probably are better suited to say that this investment uh, or this business case is on developing that road link. The bridge on Springton, which is currently serviceable, uh, can be a, a prime one at a different front. And as I said, I'm not, I didn't ask the consultants to address it in this report. That's it. Yeah. But it certainly would obviously assist its um, assessment if it's then considered in the, in the language you'll be using about it ultimately being part of the network in, in some way, shape, or form. And that network would obviously increase over time. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Sorry, Sorry yes, a comment on that bridge. I mean, it is on the same line, but it's it's really hard to get to and and from if there's been water over it or anything because it's a really dangerous bridge to get onto. No side rails or anything, and it's just a single line bridge, and it is dangerous anyway. I really think that it should be looked at as a priority. It might be serviceable, but only to a certain degree. Thank you, Mr. Lisa. Uh, any other questions for the option? <coughs> Not so much a question, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's uh, really I've only had the report since uh, Friday when I grabbed it. I haven't had a great deal of time. I've picked up on a couple of things that I have concern over, especially the benefit factor of 1.2 or whatever it is, 1.3 um, cost benefit ratio. Um, I can't see in there anywhere where they've thrown in the potential of, of uh, some going forward over the next five to ten years, uh, a little bit of climate change if that was to be factored in. Uh, when these crops that we're looking for to go to Yamla uh, coming off could be in those more monsoonal or more larger downpours that we see in recent times rather than general rain, which then says the roads are going to close more when we need to get there. And, uh, and looking at a cost benefit ratio of 1.24 or whatever it came out of, I can't recall, but it, it, I just don't know whether it's viable and I haven't had enough time to, to research it personally. Um, so I'm, I'm a bit sceptical at this stage personally to make a, a decision to date on. Well, I don't, I don't know. I suspect um, Council Mayor the climate change program is probably not going to change the BCR. It, it, the business case is assessed on, 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 on in, in situ, it says it's a rapid business case assessment. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's not so much about uh, the connectivity, it's the, the, the fact that you know, where, where the, where the uh, Yamala location is and, and obviously the network that attaches to it, uh, it's not going to be significantly changed by climate change you know, in, in relation to to that property, that's not going to change that much bigger. So it's, it's what, what you're what you're being asked to do here is, is to um, acknowledge the fact that um, in its current state and with the current level of infrastructure and with the stakeholder engagement that's taking place, that is the, the, the delivery point and the road network that needs to support it. And that uh, you, 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 what you're going to commit to is a three hundred thousand dollar budget to keep estimating that that's the way you're going to go. Climate change is not going to change the direction to the port. Arguably, it will be talked about what it might change in terms of crop yields and types of crops. But at the end of the day, uh, it won't be just about grain crop as well. It's about the whole industrial side of it. And the fact that you know whatever's grown in the, in the region is going to be that's going to be the destination. So it's really about the network. So that's sorry, things wrong. Well. Um, there is as the um, SNEC report has been to, to August, I think we've all had a look at that report and that gives a fair indication of, um, they've done quite a lot of work on it, haven't they, SNEC, as the, for the feeder road, so I would, and it's on docks on tap, I think. Just, just one comment, just 
Venoria Road is Venerina Road. Venerina. Oh, yeah, I. Yes, we've got a new one. But there's, there's make a report with their seasonality and things like that, all of the various crops. So there is a there is a consideration of certainly the fact that I mean the Acel Allen report the other day from CHDC uh, talks about um, uh, you know the data gap and the reliability and yields and yields per ton per hectare. So you know there is there is that sort of information around that wouldn't you know I, I suppose fundamentally change the business case enough that whilst you have misgivings about it, it was going to change it from not being practical to being still a viable option. It's just more about the recognition of, um, aside from that view, that it's actually, that's the location, that's going to be the road network and that won't change, so. Uh, through the Chair, Council, just to understand uh, uh, the challenge we have, and I think that this workshop, unfortunately, I wasn't here, but uh, the problem with the BCR is benefit to cost. If we want high level of unity on a road network that is seasonal, say uh, use Sanders Creek, we will be investing significant millions of dollars getting that high level bridge in there to get that complete immunity. The problem is that means if you benefit to cost, significantly reduce. So if I can use the mantra or the message I got from uh, the consultants and Steve Ripper from the workshop was we want a sealed but flood resilient road um, um, network versus a high immunity or weather um, access. There are alternative accesses, so we, we're not impacting adversely on the community. The community still has means of getting in and out. So this is not a, a, a route that's been developed uh, with the intent of providing community with flood immune access out of the various uh, areas that they can do to both highways. This is really a, a, a developing a, a principal haulage route, not just for grain, for feed, et cetera, other agricultural crops. So the, the, the driver behind it is significantly different than saying we're looking at a highway standard or weather, high immunity access. And just say the dilemma, the bigger money we invest to get that high level of immunity means our, our cost benefits are going to reduce and our likelihood of attracting funding is going to reduce. I hope that gives a context. So really, it's about, as we said, the option that's preferred um, on the back of all the consultation that was done that we want to develop further. Oh, yeah. uh, to the chair, to Gerard, with the likelihood of attracting funding um, or the buckets of funding that I guess are around. Right now, would it be likely that we'd only receive a 50% contribution for any work on this road, or would it be potentially higher than that? Um, through the Mayor, councillors, I probably don't want to go into too much detail as to how we could stage this project. Um, there's many ways of breaking it up in terms of putting sections first to open the network, you know, with the missing section to be gravel standard and then come with a seal afterwards. So there's, that, that hasn't been developed. So in terms of preempting what the business case would look like and what funding we pursue, the figure, the indicative estimate for uh, uh, this link is about 18 million. And I agree that would be unlikely a single funding application. But again, we have to uh, see how we can develop the business case to support the best value for uh, money outcome and the best PCR um, to be successful at a funding application. This and this, I have to flag at this stage will have to be a federal one. Um, I don't believe the RTIT's um, allocation would be adequate to really support it. So we really will be pursuing and have to pursue the federal um, um, funding programs, which does permit for road. Uh, roads, uh, the state one doesn't because of the allocation of tax funding for roads, so that we can't under be all qualify or make this project el el eligible. So it's really just the, uh, the federal buckets of money that we can pursue. So those, those, um, you know, it, 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 because because if you adopt this, as I said before, the the um, I suppose where state funding affects us in terms of LARS and the road priorities, well, that change through. The road transport group, so there'll be a hierarchy there that will change. So perhaps we, we might allocate some money. But what Gerard's saying is, 
in terms of, say, the first link from, from Bonadoon Road uh, back to Jim Road, uh, there's things like, obviously, the Sandhurst Bridge uh, and then a couple of strategic culverts. So you would, you, would, you would lodge those sorts of things in isolation or a separate funding or try to attract separate funding for those. Uh, on, on the basis that you were, you were strategically making sure that um, you weren't creating uh, what we has been done in the past where we, we, we put strips in the middle of seal sections or, 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 or uh, and I know Kevin Bickoff's here so he probably understands what I'm talking about, but um, a, a structured approach to certain parts of it so that there's a continuity and the, um, I suppose, restrictions to any part of the network um, uh, uh, in, a, in an empirical order are taken care of. So culverts, bridges uh, and good surfaces in certain sections so at least uh, the network is um, uh, over a period of time and you would assume that the $80 million is going to take us any number of years to achieve um, but obviously there's some continuity and some sort of uh, consistency on the network. So uh, that's from the state level. The TIDS money is likely to be very small so it might be uh, certainly widening, road widening or sheeting certainly. Uh, might have to happen, but certainly the big ticket items would have to come through a, a significant government funding opportunity. Yes, sorry, Councillor Yeah, I'd just like to move that we accept option one there, and I mean, this is only the first preliminary yep. step in an ongoing yep. saga, so it will be coming back to Council on a regular basis, so I'd like to move that. So it's been moved by Councillor Nixon, seconded by Councillor Gordon Smith. That uh, obviously those spaces are recognised, and then further that obviously uh, those roads that have been added in there uh, uh, adopt uh, uh, option one as a council third option. So it's been moved and seconded. Those in favour? <laughs> Against? Thank you, councillors. Thank you, Gerard. And uh, thank you to all. I know there's been a lot of work involved there on our grants back then, as you say, some of those stakeholders, uh, and certainly Tyrone and, and others, uh, put a lot of time in it, and that's a great result. So. All right, councillors, the next agenda item is actually election signage and advertising. And while we're on that, I suppose topically uh, we are in the uh, by election phase. Uh, I might just ask our CEO to come in after Jamie's report and just maybe update us a little bit on the actual machinations and important dates around that. So uh, I'll uh, ask the gentleman at the Daniel Fletcher if he can introduce that next uh, agenda item. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Councillors, as mentioned, the uh, by election is approaching and the opportunity to evaluate our election signage and advertising procedure has been taken up by our ever busy planning team, uh, stage coordinator through Jamie. Um, so there is a duplication and conflict with our um, election signage and advertising procedure in our local law number four. So recommendations to rescind the election uh, signage and advertising procedure and to make amendments to our civil and local law. So I can't let Jamie update you on the details of this. No worries. Um, it's probably not too much more to add from Manuel. Um, but essentially with the, um, the procedure in its current form, um, doesn't clearly articulate its relationship to the local law. Um, and the local law um, has, is a high head of power, which um, clearly states that there's application processes for so this um, location of signage in our road reserves. Um, it can consider where they go, um, what they look like, um, how many there are. Um, so the recommendation is that we rescind the procedure um, and uh, assess uh, all signage in the road reserve um, under the local law and in the short term um, intermeasure prepare a fact sheet which we'll have prepared by the end of the week um, which will ensure, I suppose, provide clear direction around um, the types of signage, um, size, um, the location of where we want to see them, for example, not on any existing infrastructure, so poles or street signage or trees, um, when they are, um, that there will be a bond generally held by council for location of signage which will be used um, and returned on the basis of the signs being removed. If they're not removed um, by the candidate, they will be, um, that bond will be used by, um, by the local law team to um, essentially go out and clean the signage up and dispose of them lawfully. Um, so that's probably it in a nutshell, and we'll ensure also consistency with TMR provisions, the signage as well, which are currently different to what our procedure has. Yeah. So, Jamie, this just brings us a little bit more in line with some more contemporary sort of uh, uh, legislation and what should happen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
And I suppose the longer term goal as well is that through a major amendment to our local laws, which is I think understanding conceptual stage with our um, ranges team, that we can put all that clear direction that will be on the fact sheet in the short term into the local law itself. So it's really clear in there. Um, if you make an application, what we're considering um, and any conditions that will likely go on those approvals as well. Do we all have to declare a few inches with the elected or may have participated in something else? No. No. Uh, so, Councillor, any questions? Or? <coughs> it's a good thing probably Councillor Bell's here. I haven't checked all the trees between here and Mary. <laughs> so, well, look, that, that's. Um, Councillors, I mean, that's just a, a, a rationalisation of something. And I think it was brought to your attention at the last election because I, I think over time, uh, the, the type of election had changed. I don't know if you ever saw a sign here before 2008. Um, and obviously, uh, uh, there are some uh, prolific uh, numbers of candidates, and it can be quite unsightly and untimely. And, and in fact, in some places, it causes issues, uh, certainly with traffic. So um, I, I'm assuming this addresses a lot of that issue. And, and, and certainly gets the opportunity of um, having that fact sheet, which gives people you know, pretty clear direction and how that stuff can go. So, the council's happy with that. Through my chair, yes. this also apply, you just mentioned all those things there. Eh? Why doesn't that apply to our own signs? I mean, like the, the stuff that we leave laying there that's in the road. As in, oh, yes, in the we as in council. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's nothing to do with this. So that is in signs that are laying down. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Signs that are laying down, signs that are left there unneeded, signs that are left chained to our own signs, signs that are left. Like I've got a big bug with signs, you know that. And it's probably not important to bring this up. So tell me no, sure. well, it's, it's an associated issue, so it's now we're going to impose this on the, on the public. We don't follow it ourselves. Well, this is certainly around election time, more specifically, but I, I take your point. And, I, and if you want to bring that up and, and make a resolution in a general business, I think we should if you want to make, make, make a bird of doing that. So. All right, Councillor, any other questions about the election time? Yep. Yes, Councillor Nixon, sorry. Yeah, just um, are we going to publicise the fact that this issue is there before us today so for the people that are going to put their names up for the by election? Oh. Well, yeah, do that. Oh, I think it probably would be appropriate. I think it was good management of, of the process. Um, you know, we certainly, in terms of the operational part of this box, made a, a, a press release about you know, those dates and times. And if we want to say to people and candidates, these are the sorts of things. So we mentioned that there's a signage stuff that could be included, I suppose. That's why we do it. And certainly on our website, I don't think there's any problem with that. I mean, we can make it quite clear to people. Right. Sorry, Charlie. Happy to move it. Moved by uh, Council of Ribblecombe that the Central Holland Regional Council rescind that, um, uh, the previous election signing and advertising procedure and we make an amendment to subordinate local law number four and put it to the local government. So it's been moved by Council of Ribblecombe, a seconder. Councillor Rolfe, all in favour? Against? Thank you. Right. And, uh, and, and on that basis, if you can see, I can give us an update just on the process here. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the Electoral Commission of Queensland hadn't set firm firm dates. They provided us with some indicative dates, and they go as follows. The polling day uh, should be the 30th of September. It's the intention of the state. Nominations will be called from the 25th of August to the 5th of September. Ballot papers will be sent out around about the 8th of September. I uh, just had a quick look at the ECQ, the Electoral Commission of Queensland website. There's nothing there as yet. Uh, and that's uh, again just reinforcing that those dates I've just provided you are indicative. I don't think that they'll change, but we're still waiting for final confirmation. So the uh, and the other thing too, um, uh, Council might like to provide some comment, but um, I was going to proceed and organise for a uh, candidate information uh, night. So that um, uh, people that are willing, we're interested in putting their hand up in the by election to learn a little bit about the role of the council and what's involved, have their questions answered. And um, I think that's a, that's a good thing to do, maybe one or two nights um, that the department will have a good run. Yeah, good yeah, and obviously, in you know, the by election, uh, when it's not a prescribed period of time, 
as a step of the rest of the state, obviously candidates don't get that option if you're a new candidate to attend meetings um, and get that background. So I think that's a great idea, Scott. So that'll be great for candidates. Mm -hmm. All right. Have we other councillors? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, I think you're hanging around for good reason. Um, uh, Daniel, you might introduce this next um, uh, agenda item, which is the amendment to charge of resolution number 12. Certainly, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, this report counts as also rather simple, hopefully, and self explanatory. After the uh, charges resolution 12 um, was adopted earlier this year, about six weeks ago, there's just some minor errors that have been identified, and we look at the director, Father Bruce, so, and uh, Jamie, at my mouth, too. Um, thanks, Daniel. So, um, yeah, very minor changes. Um, updating the dates of the resolution, um, and I suppose the bigger change is that <coughs> where uh, for short-term accommodation um, in the instance of a caravan park where it's tent and caravan sites, um, fully articulating that those um, charges will also apply for nature-based tourism, which include um, uh, tent and camping and cabin sites. So, um, at the moment, it's a bit unclear, and we've had a few people query us, so we just wanted to add in to make it very clear. Quite simple. Mood work, Councillor McIndoe, that we uh, adopt those uh, resolutions. Um, Second by Councillor Daniels. Any discussion? Any questions or otherwise? Otherwise, we'll put it to you. Um, those in favour? Against? Thank you. Thank you. I was going to ask is um, have we, I, I haven't seen it, maybe I've missed it, have we promoted the um, adoption of the new charges back from my first There was a media release okay. that went out. Um, okay. I'm not sure in, um, where it was picked up by the media wise, but okay. I, we're, it's definitely something we're still in the work of ensuring that we're better promoting our region and working with the agency to do so. Okay, that's the way we do it. Thanks, John. All right, Councillor, we skipped down the agenda to the uh, CEO's report there. The first agenda item is in relation to the local government Queensland annual conference. I'll hand over to Scott, thank you. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is, as the Mayor introduced, an annual conference is probably the most important conference uh, we would attend. There's probably five or six key ones annually. Uh, this is the, the main one. So, my recommendation is that we should certainly be represented and given that we will have a number of items on the agenda that we're fostering uh, on behalf um, of the region uh, and hopefully enlisting the support of the Central Queensland Regional Organisation for councils, it's imperative that they, we're there to represent uh, represent those motions. So the recommendation is that um, uh, the Mayor, the Deputy Mayor, other councillors to be identified uh, and myself attend uh, that conference which will be held from the 16th to the 18th of October inclusive at Gladstone. And, and Marnie, you could allow, what should you allow to do in your report? It's certainly, uh, you know, this is a great opportunity for us to cut support, certainly uh, one of our local Central Queensland Council. Um, and that community is certainly, I know Matt Bernard is very, very keen and very uh, proud of this community, they want to get a, a good ride off, so uh, I really encourage the councillors to go all the same place as can be. So. Councillor Wimpercombe, you're interested? Councillor McIndoe? Councillor Rolf? I'm happy to probably drop off. I think I will be in Paraguay for the session of the session. This happened last six years ago, and now it's Paraguay. I'm away, I'm away in confirmation of it. Yeah. Well, you stay in, stay in the yeah. yeah, and if you need it, can, can you just not for a couple of days, money and maybe Councillor Bell? Yeah. So, Councillor Rimble came, and maybe I don't know. I look, I look, yeah. I think so, Councillor Bell, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And uh, the Deputy Mayor said, maybe at this stage. Well, we, we can leave it there. Confirmation, yeah, that's right. But it's so very close. It makes good sense to be well represented there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right, so councillors, that'll be uh, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and Rolf, um, Brimblecombe, McIndoe, and Bill. 
Det var så meget det hele. Men hvor kan så Nixon, den sikre boy, du er også sådan her. Sorry. Ja, det tror jeg. Kansler Daniels. Uh, all in fire against Thank you. The other ring I'm mad at telling them where you're sending a full team. So. Right, councillors, uh, for the next agenda item there is the, is the uh, Ains and Bank closure in Springshaw. Scott will lead us through this one again, thank you. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, for the benefit of our um, online listeners, I wonder if it would be prudent for me to read the letter. Um, it is part of the public agenda, so people do have access to this document, but I can read it if you think it's a good one. Well, it, it. it is a very important and serious issue. And I've taken the liberty, councillors, of including in my recommendation the reaffirmation of the decision that we previously made last year. Uh, and certainly the first part of the recommendation is to write the organiser of the petition to advise them formally the responsible to go to the ANZ Bank. So I'll just read this. It's addressed to myself, uh, Scott Mason, CEO. Dear Mr Mason, thank you for your letter dated the 12th of July 2017 regarding the closure of the ANZ Springshaw branch. In your letter, you have expressed your disappointment of the decision to close the ANZ Springshaw branch and urged ANZ to reconsider the decision. These decisions are never easy. However, this decision has been made because the number of customers using the branch in recent years has been declining as people take up digital and mobile banking and other bank services such as in-store payments and ATMs. People are not using bank branches in the way they used to. Overwhelmingly, people prefer online banking and the benefits it offers, such as being able to see all your transactions at once and being able to quickly make payments. There will always be customers who prefer to bank in branch, but most people do not want to come into branches unless there is a specific need, such as opening a new account. We are very conscious of the impact on customers, particularly those who do not, do not use internet or other types of banking. Alternative face-to-face -face banking services are now available locally through the Springshaw Australia Post Office at 33 Foot Street. The Post Office takes cash deposits of up to $5,000 or cheque deposits of up to $1 million per day and cash withdrawals of $1,000 per day. Our district manager, Michael Grimer, is managing the transaction and is happy to meet with customers. I believe he has been in touch with your office and would welcome customer referrals on his mobile number as advised. I will read it, 0459 933 341. An automatic teller machine will be located in Springshaw, either at the present location or nearby. We are offering employment in adjacent areas to our staff in Springshaw and hope they will accept our offers. Finally, I would like to stress ANZ is not withdrawing from the Central Highlands area or other parts of regional Australia. We have around 24,000 Australian agricultural customers, agriculture customers and loans over $13.1 billion as at 31 March 2017. Locally, we have commercial bankers across the region servicing customers from startups through to large complex corporate and agricultural borrowers. We actively contribute to the strength of the central Queensland economy and have already committed over $55 million in new funding to commercial and agri customers in central Queensland over the past nine months. And we continue to support regional communities through our ANZ seats and renewal grants. We aim to have a strong presence in regional Australia as we continue to respond to changes in the way people bank. I would be pleased to answer any questions you have about these changes. Yours sincerely is signed, Tony Capsule, General Manager, Northern Queensland and Northern Territory Region, Australia Branch Network, ANZ Banking Group. The letter is dated the 28th of July 2017. With that, Council, the report is quite simple, as mentioned, and the recommendation is that we write to the organiser of the petition, formally advise them of the response, and that Council reaffirm its decision from 27 June to write to other financial institutions and building societies asking them to consider establishing a branch in the township of Springfield. While we're talking about uh, bank closures, as you will be aware, uh, the Bank of Queensland, I believe, is closing its branch here at Emerald as well. Over you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, okay, uh, well, councillors, uh, and certainly Councillor Rolf, you had some, maybe some additional thinking on uh, this, this launch. Yes, me, thank you. Um, as you do, you sit around thinking about what could and what should be. Um, and along with a couple of other people in, in Springshaw, we've done quite a lot of bringing around to different uh, financial institutions, um, sussing out 
yeah, a way forward for, for banking facility. Um, as we said last meeting, that um, with the closure of the ANZ Bank in Springshaw, that there is now not a financial institution in the southern half of the Shire um, as it stands. Um, and my thoughts um, about all of this is that we've, we've had, um, and I'm yet to speak to uh, people like uh, Buck Alden Shire Council, um, who I believe have a, an agency um, through the council with a banking institution in, in some of their regional towns, etc. So you start to think about um, how could we have a, a regional um, um, banking influence in both Springshaw and Rolston, um, that surely we can somehow, um, you know, even if it was through the council office or the, and the transaction office in, in Rolston. And this is just ideas at this stage, it's just, just thoughts that, that come to mind. Um, there are a number of safes in Springshaw and um, I believe that there's probably a facility in, in Rolston as well. So um, I think we, you know, it's unfortunate, but it, I, we're not going to change ANZ's mind. Um, and despite them saying that they've they got other, you know, they're not leaving the region, regional areas, they have since closed Hewenden Bank as well, so ANZ, um, in the last month or so. Um, in the last 12 months, that closed in um, Theodore. Um, so it, it's it, it's what's happening. So for the regional services. So let's um, let's think about other institutions. Um, talk to everybody we can, and um, and see how we can get some sort of um, combined effort, whether it's through council or a, you know, a private or a community banking. Well, councillors, I mean, uh, Scott's report, I suppose, been around the response that we, we, we undertook at last, or we undertook to do at last meeting in respect of the petition and in respecting that, and obviously then the contact with the bank and their right reply. Um, we, we, we can certainly um, resolve to to, um, to agree to that res those couple of resolutions there, but it might be that we might need to make a third one in respect of uh, making a, uh, certainly, uh, and, and, and I would like to hear councillors' views on the fact that it is an economic development um, priority for, for certainly the southern half of the central islands. Uh, that surely, um, certainly in conjunction with the CHTC, we might be able to get a, an order um, of, of you know, what we need to put together there in some way, shape, or form as an incentive package. Uh, and I think it's an exercise there. And, and I know Councillor Rolf, you've articulated some of those. But if we could do that as a, as a, a, a positive step towards actually um, uh, being conscious of the sort of services that are likely to be there for a prospective client and we get that put together packaged and, and if need be consider some incentives to, to get something like that happening uh, likely correctly so not only in Springfield but for Ralston uh, and certainly those um, uh, major tourism uh, I suppose customers that, that have to do, use those services so um, I'm not sure exactly um, whether that's the just just only CHTC, but certainly within the sphere of its economic importance to the region and the fact that we might have to offer some incentive, then perhaps they could prepare something that's a bit more robust. Uh, and, and as you correctly point out, it need to have a, a, a third a third party uh, external consultant maybe look at uh, what we might have to do and use their experiences to, to guide us around that. Um, Mayor, through, um, through Ag Force, um, I've got connections with a couple of expanders, and um, they're actually, and there's some others that are um, mediation type people that um, very, um, they have been bankers, so they really do know about regional, regional Queensland as well. So I thought to, um, while I'm down there next week, to have meetings with them as well. In the contents of the letter that Scott shared with us from the ANZ Bank, they did make mention about the options for people at the post office. It says now available, that's a terminology 
So is that a new thing at the post office or is that no? I thought it was always there. Yeah, the, no. the post office has always been um, a banking facility for CBA and then Westpac. Um, and that too. And there, it, it's it's a yeah, a, so a bank at post. So, so ANZ was always that was always. No, no that is new. It, it's, that's new. Yeah. Yeah. And I wonder if maybe that is helpful to advertise. And, you know, I don't know how well ANZ is sharing that with people, but I think that should, so that's a big help, the fact that that post office can take those transactions. So the post office can only take $2,000 a day in cash. Well, it says it's check or something, it's 2000 in cash, so I was told the other day. I'll come down and grab the balance. Good on you. The, just um, when you look at the, the post office in Springshaw, um, it's really it's, it's really not conducive to a, 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 a banking operation. I don't feel it's very, very open. Um, there's no, it, it's the same, it's the same um, bench for banking for post for, I mean that's not, that's, that's not an indictment on the, on the post office itself, it's just, that's what it is, so I feel that. Well, it was set up to be a post office, not a yeah, bank, that's right. reality, so it hasn't yeah. got all the, yeah, it's only an agency too, it's not mm -hmm. Australia Post. Yeah. So, so I suppose, you know, the question is, um, if, if you want to put it in, uh, Scott's draft up some words there in the, the third part of the resolution there. If, that, if that's what we want to do, I think that our, our goal has to be, I mean, whilst we're very much aware of what ANZ is saying there is the, is the, is the service they're now offering and, and the fact that it's available at the post office, and I agree that we, we can still message that because people still need to obviously uh, transact. But if that's is that going to be a goal, are we happy to do that? I should have offered for you, Mr Mayor, that, that that wording, it's only for our point, but that's limited to the current problem. Yeah. If you want it, uh, we could throw this open. Uh, still, we ask the CHDC to be able to fully understand that the banking needs for a diverse and growing regional council area with a view to not only attracting but retaining existing uh, services from financial institutions. And we need a bigger body of work, and if it was tackled appropriately, we could do the, do the important bit first to, to, to do something that springs from roles to, and, and then. Following with the bigger body of work, but the council. See, one of the, the problems we've got, but if they're closing on the 27th of September, already people are talking about changing banks and going. That's right. So we need to act rather quickly. And I think mm -hmm. I raised this at the last meeting that if we just wait until October, November, and say, oh, something's going to open there, people would have taken action to change banks or something by then. Um, so uh, we need to do this ASIP. Well, I think that discussion we had last meeting was obviously the chance to respond to the bank, then we get it straight into action. So I think I think we're aware of what needs to happen, and, and, and as you know, some some council have obviously been um, you know continuing the advocacy and certainly a, a solution. So I mean, are people happy to see that? Yeah, um, certainly. Um, I'd, yeah, I'd like to move to. We contact um, the UN. Um, however, is it is it all right for me to give her a call this this afternoon because she doesn't have internet, doesn't have email. Sorry, sorry. Oh, uh, the the um, the organizer of the petition. Um, she doesn't have internet and she won't be live streaming today. So. Yeah. So I think as long as you articulate that's the view of council and. The responses coming in formally will be a formal response to even advice of the outcome. So, depending on, on how councillors see the resolution, so you have to move that, councillor. Yes. Uh, well, right, yeah. Move by councillor Rolf, seconder. Councillor Daniels. So, there's three parts of the resolution there. So, obviously, um, uh, what we rightfully need to do there to respond to the petitioner or the organiser of the petition, um, and then obviously that. Um, uh, Reaffirm that to, or affirm that resolution the 27th of June, and then obviously further that um, obviously and, and, um, and as Council Nixon says to do that as soon as possible, that uh, we relate uh, relay this to and, and obviously coordinate um, the CHDC approach under those wording under that wording there to support uh, a financial institution to the Springfield Ralston area. So um, we'll move, sorry, go. yeah, I'll move. Um, 
Just in, in relation to CHDC, uh, next week, um, the representatives of CHDC will be in Brisbane at the same time. Yes. I am, and I'm hopeful that we'll be able to get onto a couple of these guys. Uh, That's good. Right, any other questions, comments, or otherwise? We're going to move that. And certainly, down those live streams today, that obviously the following is and realise it was on our agenda today. Uh, we certainly thank them for their, uh, obviously, their resoluteness and um, consideration of the petition and, and certainly uh, advocating for their councillors. So I thank the councillors for obviously keeping this uh, up front and centre uh, as, a, as a major issue for us. So, uh, councillors, that's been moved and seconded. Um, all in favour? Against? Thank you. All right, councillors, general business. Um, Councillor McInerney, do you just want to elaborate maybe a, something around your, your side? Yes, so uh, we have a carry out a motion from the leadership and governance. Yeah, that's 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 the late agenda item that we've come to. So, Thank you for that. Yeah. Did you not cover the other late agenda items? Should we go to general business? Yes. Yeah, it is. Hey. No, I just wanted to. Um, sorry, you asked me a question, mate. I was actually. No, 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 sorry, it was just about that you want to. Uh, we speak to speak to that signage issue, yeah. I think everyone got the, yep. the idea pretty clear we need to look at it because if it pertains to one, it should pertain to yeah. ourselves. Yep. So you're effectively saying any, any loose signage, signage that's not standing. Um, signage that no longer pertains to works constructed, uh, yep. works undertaken. Redundant signage. Yep. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Any other like, general business on There is one, one I'd like to bring up in lieu of that the, uh, there was no reporting in the community's um, segment with uh, an update. I just wanted to um, again quickly uh, touch on the recent uh, National Sports Convention in Melbourne that was attended um, and, and more so again in light of uh, GPAC or the Game Plan Advisory Committee that had its uh, inaugural meeting uh, last week and, uh, and so it's up and running and, and the importance that uh, the National Sports Convention had on, on two faces. <clears throat> One, the, um, you know, to, to make sure that we, we're staying abreast of, I guess, uh, best practices in this country and, and understanding what we're in front of and then to align the GPAC uh, and the changes that are about to be undertaken in, in our uh, sport participation in the in the, uh, in the region, and the big uh, correlation between the two is that you know there's a it's just imperative that uh, we take a, a safety aspect or, or a view of, of safety for all participants in the um, in the playing surfaces uh, as it's got a direct uh, coalition between participation and um, so there was a, it, whilst it was a, uh, a three day um, convention down in Melbourne, it was extremely uh, well put together. Uh, there was a lot of uh, health uh, aspects of it as well as uh, a lot of um, business uh, providers that was also there of course selling their wares. But, uh, all in all, the, the convention was very informative and uh, very well accepted by, by both attendees, Daniel Fletcher and myself. And uh, there was a lot gained from, from the, uh, the convention itself and we, we hope to bring that back and present uh, a lot more through the, through the GPAC uh, or through the game plan. And uh, it, it certainly escalated. Uh, to me, the importance of, of GPAC and, and the future of participation, both uh, as a sport and also as a recreation, uh, recreational choice, uh, and what it provides to a community. So, to, all in all, very uh, satisfactory convention. Thanks, thanks, Alan. And those game plans, your first meeting uh, that Council Macado chairs, those minutes will come next time, Daniel, to our oh, yeah. next meeting. Yeah. So, and, and obviously that was the one that was attended by our new uh, community representative. So, it was a pretty exciting meeting, a bit of a, an interesting format. Wasn't it? That was, uh, <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks for talking to us. Exactly. And sharing. And sharing. And sharing. Exactly. Yeah, sure. Any other bit of business, Council? Yeah, Council Ross. Um, yes, yeah, so I've uh, been talking about um, grant payments, etc. Just a thank you to the community for um, uh, the opening of the, the uh, multi centre, what do you call it? The multi purpose centre in Springshaw. It was an excellent afternoon. Um, um, it was well received, I, I'd say. Um, however, the next thing on the is the playing service of the football fields at Springshaw, um, which needs a, um, well, basically they just said it needs ripping up. So um, that'll be the next the next item on the agenda for, for Springshaw Sports. I think that rather than that, more broadly, I think that all of the Central Highlands is actually a needed review of some of the playing service. The NRL, the KRL, the NRL water was uh, certainly quite done. Uh, well, the grounds came under quite a bit of scrutiny, and I think there will have to be something done there in terms of um, yeah, that's, and that's it. just to, to reiterate, that's the purpose of the, the GPAC is to get an understanding of where we're at, what needs to be required, and at what level of your right. participation we're going to uh, be involved in. And, you're right. <coughs> and, and just a suggestion to get caterers to design the kitchens in future. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. All right, um, Councillor, any other general business? Yeah, I, I attended the uh, Murray Darling uh, Association um, Region 12 meeting down at Roma. Um, it's very interesting. Um, it covers, or sort of Murray Darling Basin cover, covers about 40% of the Australian mass. Um, there's, in the Murray Darling Association, there's 167 local government associations are eligible to, to, uh, to join that, that association and has 100 members at present. Um, it was it, uh, very interesting in what they're able to do and uh, who they uh, sort of network with. Um, I'd be interested in, in talking to their CEO, which is uh, Emma. And, uh, <coughs> Banbury, um, just to listen to her, and there is a join fee um, uh, with a maximum fee uh, per person of our, of our area, but it's you know, interested just to listen to her to present her our council on a brief strategy and briefing meeting. We'll look forward to it. Thank you, Joe. Uh, yeah, appreciate that. That's certainly. Yeah. Um, you know, sort of, sort of, certainly around that water security, you know, water regulation is, um, you know, certainly relevant in this area as well. So. Is any other general business? For all councils we have, um, just the latest dinner items, which is in fact um, a couple of things. Um, we'll adopt the, the standing committee meeting, uh, stand, standing meeting. This morning, which is uh, certainly finance, uh, finance and infrastructure communities and the leadership, uh, they've been uh, distributed. So I think we're going to adopt three of them, all yeah. of them together. Uh, so, Councillor, someone happy to move those? Uh, moved by Councillor Goddard, second seconded by Councillor Grimble. I'm sorry, Councillor Nixon, you didn't see these. Are they uploaded? No, no, they didn't have a copy. I couldn't open, but some so for completeness, Council Nixon, we will distribute these to you now. Oh, Chris can't say that, so we'll share them. Sorry? Just Steve Reader. Yeah, a bit later on. It's right. Can I congratulate the Chairs this morning? Certainly making good use of their space. Deputy Gale obviously had a big agenda there that she managed to just narrowly squeeze in with a few interruptions. But uh, yeah, there certainly is, uh, I mean, um, keeps us all in our toes, and that's probably the way it should be, so it's pretty good. Right, councillors, uh, so they're the three, uh, effectively, they're the minutes, uh, fresh as they can possibly be. Uh, they've been moved and seconded. Uh, I think they're pretty accurate uh, record of what happened this morning there. Uh, all in favour? Against? Thank you. All right, and the other later gentleman was just the, the fact that we uh, referred the, the LGMA conference. 
uh, which was part of the CEO's um, discussion at the uh, leadership and governance meeting this morning to the open council for full council for discussion. We perhaps didn't achieve what we said out today, but we're all here uh, and we'll have the opportunity to just discussing in ten seats. So let's go lead away on that. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. The uh, Queensland State Conference for all other government managers, um, Australia Association, sorry, is going to be held at the Gold Coast from the 12th to the 14th of September. And you've got a link to and accompany me, provided you. Assuming you're going to support my attendance, but it's a great opportunity for the link to them to get across the issues that are facing today's practitioners. And it is a, a, a very different um, conference experience to the one that uh, the ones that the LGAQ organise, but I do really think it provides a great deal of insight and it can help any councillor uh, fulfil their role um, by having an appreciation for, for those other issues and pressures. And a lot of the things that are talked about are the Lots of issues that we deal with here uh, around the border at the moment. So this um, conference looks to be filled with some very contemporary and practical uh, topics. Uh, you'll know if you have a quick look through Michael Henderson uh, in, a, in a topic headline, Get Tribal. He's a corporate anthropo anthropologist. He's done a lot of work on corporate values and um, and it's about understanding the real power basis within an organisation. There's a session entitled Consistency and Flexibility, The Dilemma of Modern Strategy, uh, Engaging a Disengaged Community, Managing People to Drive Strategy and Productivity, Community Wellbeing, A New Focus for Local Government. Well, it's not the questions posed, this is a new focus for local government. Uh, healthy Workplace, Healthy Output, Exploration, Education, Recreation and Recreation, and Dan Collins, uh, Building a Culture of Accountability, the single biggest driver of organisational success. So the, the background, the other background is that Councillor Nixon for a couple of years now has expressed an interest in attending um, uh, this uh, event. Unfortunately, she's unable to this time, but that may not include another councillor from attending if they want to. So there are reports there for your consideration to do two things. One, uh, support my attendance. If you see fit, and secondly, you consider sending an electric member as well. I would absolutely love to go, but I was certainly understand from the other people that might be interested. Um, I've heard that it is a very good conference, and certainly uh, definitely support your attendance, obviously, despite that conference, but there are not the others that would like to go. But it is, a, it is a bit of a hectic week for us, so. I guess we give consideration to the fact we've got a number of standing committee, general meeting, and also community consultations that whole week. So we, we do uh, council and um, through the mayor just to. It's difficult for myself as well, um, but I think if you forego the first part of it, which is the president's welcome and some of the activities in the lead up, and uh, attend the committee meetings and, and general meeting, probably access that last plane out of them. We'll, it puts you in a position where you can you can be there on deck from Wednesday morning early uh, to see out the remainder of the of the program. So I think I think it's doable. Busy week, but it's doable. Right. Well, I, I concur with what Deputy Gale said. Is um, they are fantastic conferences. They're a little bit different from our LGOQ, I suppose, um, organisation and and, and and I suppose governance side of things. It's it's very very focused. It's very very professional, and it's. Um, got some very topical issues. Um, so happy to support Scott's attendance, happy to support Gail's attendance. Um, anyone else? All right, well, I think the resolution would be that um, Deputy Mayor Gar attend uh, as councillor and certainly to um, uh, affirm Scott's uh, attendance as CEO. I'm happy to move that. Moved by Councillor Rolf, seconded by Councillor Daniels. All in favour? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Council. Thanks, Scott. Right. Well, I think that's all. Thank you, Cover. Well, the councillors, um, that's all we're going to do. Thank you very much. Thank you to, as I said, thank you to those chairs this morning. Those pretty, pretty thorough agendas this morning. We got through them pretty well. So, uh, councillors, it is now 3:43, and I'll declare the meeting closed. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Uh, uh, councillors, we have we have uh, we